BIOS and I'm going to select this USB stick to boot the uh, installation medium. Okay, so what we're going to start out do doing is I'm going to set up full disk encryption. Now, the main reason that you would want to set up full disk encryption, especially on a device that's portable like a laptop, is that in the in the case of theft, sorry, in the case of theft of your laptop, um, certain sensitive data like passwords, logins, public keys, and stuff like that could be potentially accessed by somebody if they knew what they were doing. Now, generally this is not, you know, for the most part in most urban areas, if your laptop gets stolen, they're gonna boot it up and be like, what is this crap, OpenBSD? And they're gonna put windows on it so they can sell it to the pawn shop or to, to a friend or whatever, you know, they're just gonna wanna make money. Cause that's how criminal, you know, most criminals out there are not elite hackers. But, um, so the full disk encryption may probably would be make better sense if you're working for a company where there is a possibility that somebody would want that data that's on your machine. So just keep that in mind. You don't, not everybody needs to use full disk encryption, but I know for a fact, since I'm doing a deep down paranoid install guide, that somebody would probably say, hey, what about full disk encryption? So we'll just get it out the way. A lot of this stuff that I'll be doing in these videos, is just kind of like I'm showing you what you could do, just like that disk wipe that I showed you. Not everybody probably needs to do a disk wipe, you know, and I know somebody in, on the comments is gonna be like, oh, but they can still get the data off of it. That's not the point, that's not the point. The point of the disk wipe was just, just a nice clean wipe in case you just bought the laptop, uh, it's used off of eBay, you don't know who used to own the disk. Maybe they had illegal content on there. You know, maybe there was malware or viruses on there. You don't know. It's just, it's just. I, I just think it's something neat to show you. If, if, if you find it not useful at all, then it's. I totally understand. It's, it's just kind of an optional thing. But a lot of the stuff I'll be doing in this video is I'll show you things that you could do that are optional, but you don't necessarily always have to do these things. You don't have to do it my way. I just want to show people that might be new to this kind of stuff so that they, you know, can expand their thinking and see different ways of doing things and, and just kind of see the, you know, like a real involved install of this kind of system. So I'll stop rambling and we'll get to the, get to the meat of the topic. So let's drop into a shell. And what we're gonna do is full disk encryption. So much like RAID, full disk encryption in OpenBSC is handled by soft RAID, the soft RAID sub, subsystem and the biocontrol command. So I'm reading directly from uh, the uh, disk setup section of the OpenBSC frequently asked questions in the RAID and full disk encryption section. You wanna skip over RAID and go straight to full disk encryption, which is, so there's two sections in there. Okay, so what we're, what we, uh, so, it also says here that note that stacking soft raid modes is not supported at this time. So you can't stack soft raid modes. So we're gonna do it exactly the way that the OpenBSD frequently asked question says to do it. So what we do is we're gonna CD into the dev. Device. Dev stands for device, CD and device. Now, whenever you're doing commands in like a Unix-like operating system, when you do uh, two ampersands, that means uh, execute the, the first command, and then once that's successfully executed, execute the second command. So it's and and sh, just pos, uh, uh, POSIX shell, so sh POSIX shell, make dev. They have this uh, shell script called make device in the device subfolder. And so we're just gonna create one called, now we're not gonna use sd0, we're gonna use uh, sd1 because SD0, I have two uh, drives on this machine. I have a SSD and I have a mechanical hard drive. So in fact, before we run that command, we can just really quickly, I can just make sure that I'm writing to the correct uh, drives. So D message, pipe, grep, SD. So we're gonna grep SD. We'll take a look here. So um, I, I definitely wanna use SD1 because that is my uh, Kingston uh, SSD. ATA is a mechanical drive. 
I'm gonna use that, I'm gonna format in that in the OpenBSD file system and use it as extended storage. And then we can mount it uh, using uh, et cetera, F file system tab or FSTAB. And we'll get into that when we, when we, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So, so what we're gonna do is, uh, so make sure we're using SD1. So CD dev, and I, I think SD1 is already created, but just in case, I'm just following this guide here. SD1. Okay, so what we're going to do is you may want to write uh, random data to the drive first with something like the following. Okay, so we already did. So actually, it also does suggest in the OPC, OpenBSD you frequently ask questions to uh, use DD to write random data. But the method I showed you writes uh, OpenSSL encryption to, uh, ran like randomly to the uh, uh, to the disk and it's just a little, it's a little bit faster than just writing uh, debut random. Um, I don't know. Uh, it even says this process can be very time consuming depending on the speed of your CPU and disk as well as the side of the disk. If you don't, uh, if you don't write random data to the whole device, it may be possible for an adversary to deduce how much space is actually being used. So even the OBSD frequency frequently asked questions recommends uh, writing random data to the disk and we already did that so we're, we're you know this is a paranoid deep down install so then what we're going to do for gpt and uefi booting we're going to do f disk minus gy if i can type properly minus b 960 sd1 okay so we wrote the gpt now we're going to create the partition layout using a program called disk label disk label minus E SD one. Okay, and we can see right here. Uh, see, I, I before, I'm actually, this is the second time making this video because before it's kind of late at night. I was following the RAID guy thinking I was following the full disk encryption guide and wondering why, what, this is weird, this isn't right. And then I just suddenly realized it. So we're gonna start this over again. So we're gonna DA, so delete a partition A and if you have any uh, confusion about uh, all the different commands, you can just press question mark, and that'll give you a list of all the uh, commands. Um, disk label and fdisk and openbsd are really simple and easy to use once you get the hang of them. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is A is for add partition. So we're gonna add partition A, A, A. So the offset's gonna be 1024. And then the size, what you wanna do is just do an asterisk, and that just means use up the entire drive, okay? And then we're gonna make the make it raid. Okay, don't make it be at 4.2 BSD. Make it raid. All we in all caps. R A I D. Okay, and then write and quit. Okay, and then now we can build the encrypted device on our A partition. So we're gonna use a program called BioControl. BioControl minus C capital C minus L S D one A soft raid zero. New passphrase. So we're gonna. I'm gonna create a passphrase for the uh, the device. My super secret password. Okay. So the crypto volume will be attached as SD3. Because as you saw before, when I did this uh, rep command. Uh, SD2 is the USB drive, SD0 is the, um, the mechanical hard drive that came with the laptop, and SD1 is the uh, Kingston SSD. So I, I, hope, I hope this all makes sense. I'll, 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 I'll try not to get too, too nerdy with this. Um, you can always go back to the frequently asked questions to, to reread over if, if any of this stuff is confusing. Okay, so then, after we've done that, uh, let's see, make sure, so we want to make sure that the uh, the SD3 devices is uh, accounted for. So, so, look, so we're already in dev, so we're going to sh uh, make dev to SD3, okay? And all right, so now all data written to uh, the SD3 device uh, will be encrypted with AES in XTS mode. Okay, uh, so what we can do is we'll overwrite the first megabyte of our new pseudo device. So DD 
if equals dev zero of equals dev rsd three c es equals one m count equals one. Okay. Awesome. And now we're gonna start with the installation. Just take a quick break here, real quick. So now that you probably already are familiar with this kind of stuff, so press I for install. So my keyboard layout is gonna be default, which is gonna be uh, just a, a standard, uh, an American layout, but we, uh, there are other layouts here, you know, uh, Japanese, Italian, Dvorak, stuff like that. So I'm gonna, so you can press uh, L for a list. So pressing enter is default. System host name. I'm not gonna come up with anything exciting. I'm just gonna call this a BSD laptop, okay? So I'm, I don't have the internet uh, hooked in, or I'm sorry, the ethernet hooked into this or the Wi-Fi set up yet because we don't have the firmware. Um, what I'll do is I'll just do an offline install just to show you how to do it. Um, so we're just gonna type done because uh, it's easy to create a network interface uh, after you've already installed. It's really simple. Doing networking on OpenBSD is just so like ridiculously simple compared to Linux. It's it, you know like a, 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 a even even a dummy like me can figure it out. So I don't have a DNS domain name, so I'm just gonna leave that uh, empty. Uh, or DNS name servers. Um, let's just use the default for now. We can we can switch it out later. It's not that hard. All right. So my password for my root account. Uh, sorry, SSHD by default, yes. So I do like to use uh, Xenodm. Uh, there are some security advantages to using uh, the XDM or Xenodm to log into an X session as opposed to using StartX, even though I think the problems with StartX were fixed. I'm not sure, but um, I just, I'm, I just, I really got out of the habit of using Start. I'm, I'm not a big StartX user anymore. But if you want to run with StartX, you know, just, just type no. Uh, start X is included by default, but we're gonna use uh, Xenodm. Okay, and uh, always, I always, my usernames are always glitch. I don't know why, I just like that. Uh, full name, root BSD. Password for glitch. All right. Morning. Uh, no, we don't want that. So we want definitely want uh, SD3. That's our soft raid crypto device that we created earlier. So we're going to use use GPT. Okay. Now you have the option. You can edit the auto layout, or you can create a custom layout. Now, generally I do like to often, I'll just like to create just a giant root partition, but you do miss out on some of the security features as to um, different files in the file system, different folders are gonna have different permissions. So like uh, if you do use just one root partition, your entire system is gonna be using WX allowed. Um, so I'm, I wanna do this the proper way, but I will go to edit auto layout. So capital E, so we're gonna edit the auto layout. And I believe we are, yeah, we are using the, I think this is F disk. Not, not disk label. This label comes next. Or this might be disk label. Let me see here. Uh, oh yeah. The, okay. So no, this is disk label. Okay. Um, all right. So PG will be, uh, basically it's print and G is for gigabytes. I always like to use PG because I want to see things in gigabytes. My brain just doesn't compute uh, just bytes and kilobytes. So let's see here. Everything looks good. So you can see that what these are called, these are called slices. So OpenBSD will put everything in these different uh, partitions within the OpenBSD file system. 
and these each of these ones have sometimes have different kind of permissions to them uh, just like the user local will have something called wx lab which allows for uh, something called um, wx which is uh, where me, uh, me, uh, things can be either writable or executable in memory but not both but uh, so so wx is for system wide unless it's in a file system that is labeled WX allowed and the program has been compiled with the WX allowed flag so that it will allow for the writable and executable uh, code in memory. Now some video games and sometimes web browsers need this but I as far as I know I've checked this it's uh, we, we might go through this and disable w, WX allowed but I think that both Chromium and Firefox don't require it anymore. You can disable it and they'll still run just fine. So anyways, uh, everything looks good here. Um, sometimes I, you you do sometimes, sometimes you wanna like uh, bump these numbers up a little bit if you're gonna be uh, doing a lot of compiling with the ports system. Um, you can always make, uh, like you can make uh, user local a little bigger or user a little bigger, just depending on what you're doing. Um, what I can do is, uh, so capital R is going to be resize, and you can resize, like, well, let's, well, let's resize H. But the thing is, is that because there's 0, 0.0 gigabytes left, we're going to have to shrink something to give it, give it uh, room. So let's uh, resize L, that's our home directory. And then what we'll do is we're going to minus uh, 2 gigabytes. I, I'm just kind of doing this because I want to show you how it's done. All right, so now if you type PG, L is two gigabytes lighter, and then we can add that two gigabytes to H, which is user local. So capital R H, and then just plus two G for two gigabytes, boom. So now user local has two more gigabytes of storage in case you, I install just a ton of ports, a ton of packages. There's a little bit more room in there. Um, all right, so everything looks good. So we're gonna write and quit. Now it's writing the file system. So which disk you do, you wish to initialize? None. Okay. Let's install the sets. Now I'm not hooked into the internet, so this is gonna be an offline install. So what you want to do is type disk. Is the partition already mounted? No, the partition is not mounted. So remember, type no. Which disk contains contains the install media? That's actually gonna be dev sd2. Because remember we looked that up earlier. Okay, the available partitions are ST0, ST1, ST2, yeah, R8. There we go. Boom, and there's our sets. All right, and if you want to remove sets, it says right here that you can do like minus game, or you know, if you want to just do a, a server only install, you can remove anything with X. So if I do minus X star, that's going to remove anything involving the X server. So I could remove games. So minus games star. And then that just removed the game set from the install sets. But I'll, I'll keep the game set because it doesn't really, I don't really care. All right. And just press enter for done. Now it says that this directory does not contain an SHA-256 signature. Don't worry, remember earlier in the previous video, we already tested this uh, this install image. And this is the sets that are uh, included in the .image file. So everything is nice and secure and has been tested and tried. Okay, so now we are installing. And I'm gonna go blow my nose because for whatever reason, it's kind of stuck. We are done and it's going to relink a unique kernel oh let's set our time zone so my time zone is america boise don't be flying out to boise to come look for me okay i do i do like my privacy okay don't worry about the firmware we're going to handle that uh later on so i'm just going to Pick up this because I'm filming this. I, I you know I've got to pick up this laptop and take it to where uh, I have an extra uh, Ethernet cable 
plug it in, install the firmware, unplug it, and then um, and then setting up Wi-Fi is like easy peasy. All right, congratulations, your OpenBSD install has been successfully completed. Good job. All right, and then let's repress enter to reboot and I'll remove the install medium first. There we go, enter. And also, um, right here, let's put on our passphrase. If anybody in the comment section says anything about Core Boot, I just want to say that um, Core Boot support for this device is not it's protect, it's not particularly um, exciting to me. Uh, you have to completely tear apart the machine. You have to use clamps and external hardware to flash the uh, the BIOS. And if you make a mistake, you break the machine. And not only that, you still have to use the Intel management engine. It offers what's a stripped down, smaller manage management engine. And from a weird, you know, God knows where source, the whole thing just completely just looks like, gives me like, like anxiety just reading it. So I have zero desire to core boot this machine, 100%. I'm sorry, I know for some people that, you know, they, 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 they get all hung up on the whole management engine thing. I understand where they're coming from. I under, I trust me. I know all about this stuff and the three ring operating system within your computer. I get it, but I'm not core booting this machine. Um, the T400 series is a much better machine for, for core boot. Um, if you do want to use a device that's running core boot, I would highly recommend, uh, if you're going to boot, like, let's say you're using a Libre boot or core boot and you're booting from grub, Use the OpenBSD EFI uh, file that, that that method that I showed you in my dual booting OpenBSD and Linux video. Use that file and use chain loading. Chain load into that file. Trust me on this one. Don't use KOpenBSD. It's kind of broken, or at least it was when I did when I was doing this stuff. I used to have a core boot, uh, or I'm sorry, a Libre boot T400. I converted it back to core boot, um, and. Uh, uh, if, or what's even better is to use CBIOS or Tyanocore as the payload, okay? Now, me personally, I don't wanna use Core Boot. I think it kind of breaks the machine. Personally, it, it, you lose out on the function, some of the functionality of the machine. And um, it, 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 it's, it's um, for me, I just, I, I don't wanna deal with it. Um, for, if, it's, if it's for you, then that's totally cool. You know, I, and I used to I used to own a core boot machine. I used CBIOS as the payload. I gave it to a friend, so it's in a friend's possession right now. But anyways, so uh, let's log into root and just activate DoS really quick, so we don't ever have to log into root again. And in fact, we probably shouldn't even log into root from X. So what we can do is we can do Control All F1, and let's log into root. I can't remember what password is. Okay, and so when you first log in, it'll tell you that you have mail. You can check your mail, and it, the mail it comes directly from Theodore himself. He wants to say hi, so we'll press one. Uh, okay. So what I want to do is I just want to look at the message. So we'll do um, edit message. Oh, it's going to use a... There we go. So this message attempts the, the uh, basic, most interesting questions you would have as a system administrator. 
So what you can do is read your mail when you first log in. Um, there is a man page called Afterboot, which is basically just uh, some simple advice and commands and stuff for a new OpenBSD system administrator, things to know about the box. Um, again, you're advised to please read the manual pages and here's how to use the uh, package manager. And also, if you wish to ensure that OpenBSD runs better on your machines, please do us a favor. After you have your mail system configured and type something like D message, system control, HW sensors. And so what you can do is you can send your D message with little commands saying like, hey, my laptop, my suspend works okay. Send it to openbsd.org, okay? And, um, and that's it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna exit Control C or Control Z. Yeah, there we go. Suspended. And I'll suspend it. It's fine. Um, he killed me. Oh, yeah. Okay, clear. So what we'll do is we're going to set up our do as. So it's going to be a vi, etc. do as.conf. Okay. So really easy. You press I and it's going to be a permit persist because we want persistence and then just wheel okay right click exit exit cool and then we're going to log into user glitch and If we type do as uh, package add. So what I'll do is I'll probably do, um, just for starters, I'll do a terminal that I can make the text bigger so you guys can see what I'm typing. So we're gonna just add my my, my favorite uh, terminal emulator to use on OpenBSC is Sakura. I, it's just a personal preference. And you can see, so the reason why I wanted to do is I wanted to set up Duas real quick and then just hop back into user. You really don't, you, I guess as a rule of thumb for security, you don't want to be running things as root very often. You don't want to be logged into root, even in TTY. It's just a good habit to get yourself into. Oh yeah, that's right. I'm not connected to the internet. <laughs> Well, we'll set that up later. But uh, so I read, so so far we got Duet set up. We have the system installed. We have full disk encryption. Uh, the next episode we are going to set up the internet, um, which I can like a dummy forgot that I yeah I'm not connected. And then uh, we'll go from there, and we're gonna start building this system into something nice and sleek and usable, a nice little laptop workstation that's secure and running OpenBSD and that has decent performance and doesn't get too hot. That's our, our main goal and I'll show you some, some nice privacy things and some, just some cool things to do and how to get everything up and running and have a uh, full hardware acceleration, no screen tearing and you know so you can watch your you know you can watch YouTube videos or other streaming services and uh, stuff like that you know and, and, and listening to music and also I'm going to show you how to screen record and how I set that up and everything. All right, so that'll be the end of this video. Uh, Root BSD out. Oh, and if you want to go back to the XOR servers, just control F5, just like that. Okay. All right. Bye.